Hey guys, I just want to make a follow-up video to the CZP10C design failure video. It seems like a bunch of you uh, don't understand what I was talking about and or maybe don't understand the safety uh, features of a pistol, um, like the mechanics of it. Um, so I'm here to address that. Gun is clear. So on a modern day pistol like this, or a Glock, you have a trigger safety right here. So if the gun were to take a hit on the ground like that, the trigger cannot be pulled. Back here, there is a trigger bar that pulls the sear on the striker. It is mechanically not allowed to drop and let go of the sear unless the trigger is pulled. So when you tr pull the trigger, it actually moves out of the way and then allows it to drop. But when it's in its firing position like that, it is mechanically blocked. Also, there is a firing pin stop in here that is designed two things, right? It's designed to move out of the way and allow the firing pin to bypass it intentionally and then set off the round. And that happens when you pull the trigger. When you pull the trigger, it actually physically moves that block out of the way. Now, its other job is to actually block the firing pin from hitting the primer if the trigger is not pulled. So I'll show you what that is like. Disassemble. Here you have the firing pin stop itself. So that, excuse me, that is designed to move out of the way when you pull the trigger and then allow the firing pin to bypass it and we're getting hiccups here. So when you pull the trigger, it moves out of the way and it allows the firing pin to protrude. So what happens is when the trigger is not pulled, this is supposed to stop the firing pin from going forward, such as it is right now. Pushing on it, it's actually stopping it. You can't see the firing pin. But when I move this out of the way, then the firing pin can get out. So the method of releasing that intentionally is by pulling the trigger. As you can see right here, looks like a triangle shape if my camera will focus. When you pull the trigger, okay, it moves. It moves and allows the firing pin block to move out of the way and allow the firing pin to strike. As you can see, the trigger bar is also dipping down as well. So, as I've said before, the only reason, or the only, yes, the only reason this firing pin should poke out through there is when the trigger's pulled, when you're intentionally shooting it. When you're not intentionally shooting it, it's supposed to stop the firing pin from going forward. Supposed to stop it. Now I'll show you the M and P. Okay, disassemble. It's a little bit difficult to get this one out. There you have the firing pin block. Right now, it is actively working. And if I push on the firing pin or on the sear, pushing forward, you can't see it. You can't see it poking out. Now, when I press on the firing pin block, see I press down on it, then my firing pin can poke out. Okay, so when it's not being activated, it's supposed to stop the firing pin. Now on the frame, this piece right here, when you pull the trigger, it moves and it's designed to push this inward and allow the firing pin to strike the primer. So what happens is guys, this is a drop safety feature. <clears throat> So the firing pin block is a drop safety feature. It's designed to stop the firing pin when the trigger is not pulled. So if you drop the gun, I know on the Polymer 80 uh, Glocks, 
On the rails here, they're actually polymer. So if it takes a hit, the slide can actually come apart from the frame. And if that's the case, the sear on the trigger bar and the sear on the striker will come apart. What happens is the firing pin will slam forward. Now, if your firing pin block doesn't work like it should, that firing pin is bypassing that and it's slamming into the primer. You're setting off the round there if your firing pin block does not work. So it has to work all the time, guys. I'll show you here too. This one's a little more difficult to do. Might knock the camera off here. So that stopped at that, that time. Stopped it again. Stopped it again. So this one's working. If I push on it, then yes, the firing pin can come out. So a lot of you guys have said as well, um, well, uh, yeah, the firing pin bar or the trigger bar is not designed to, you know, let go of the sear, right? Unless you pull the trigger, it's physically impossible. But like I said, the whole, des the whole design of the firing pin block is in case the trigger doesn't work. In case the trigger bar fails, in case the trigger fails, in case the sear ever gets in dis disengaged. So that's why it is there. And if it doesn't work, like on the CZ P10C, then that's a design failure. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. See, there's a little gap there. That's not from it being stopped by the firing pin stop. That's it bypassing the firing pin stop, slamming into there, and then bouncing back a little bit. Firing pin stop is not working. Not when the firing pin slams home. Now, if I were to slowly do it, yes, of course it works. But even when it does work, the other issue is that the momentum of the firing pin may or may not be enough to push the whole unit forward like that. So right now the firing pin is doing its job. You might think, oh, you see, it does work. It's probably safe, right? Nope, the whole unit slides forward. Here, let me fix my camera real quick. The whole unit slides forward when the firing pin stops blocks the firing pin. So that is a major design issue, guys. And I'm surprised a lot of people don't know that. I would think, you know, somewhat knowledgeable people would see right off the bat that, okay, that is a, that is a problem. That is a design failure. So I hope this addressed the video, guys. Uh, if you like the video, consider subscribing, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one.